Welcome back to Champion News Talk Radio, brought to you by championnews.net. Today, our founder, Jack Roser, and myself have Tom Roser. And before the break, we were talking about capitalism versus community organizingism, <laughs> where our president, I don't even think he ran a well, lemonade stand. Just, uh, you know, think about it. Uh, <coughs> the president has put advisors around him that he's called czars. Uh, you know, the that that really says a lot about him that he would think that that was a nice name for the closest advisors to the president of the United States. Um, you can make a joke out of it and say that uh, the children of the czar are called sardines, but uh, <laughs> those fishes that he got and their professors and so forth are not people of industry. Industry, business, capitalism is a very leavening experience because every day presents you with the running problems of keeping a whole bunch of, of people going on their jobs in a business, selling and making, and, and dealing with your competitors who are competing with you in this country and elsewhere. Every day is a problem of using your facilities to sell something in which there's something left over called profit. And if you don't do it, you automatically get eliminated from that race. Yeah, you go belly up. It's called, I think, Chapter there is 11. No belly <laughs> up. There is no belly up for government employees. Right. And that, that's a big part of what has happened to us. We got too damn many people in the government that are doing nothing but making regulations and, and applying them to us in business. Uh, it's not the way it goes. But I turn it over to you, Tom. Uh, you've been pounding this thing home and making a, a very large company be very successful. And uh, the initiatives you started in the neighborhood, too, are worth talking about, beyond the business. The president has, um, I, I would say his motto is that he loves jobs, but he hates job creators. Mm -hmm. And many people think that the capitalist is trying to um, uh, usurp the labor and uh, exploit the worker. And I don't think that's true, and I don't even think that work, free workers feel that. Maybe a unionized teacher may feel that, but I don't find that in, in any of our employees. And auto, I would say, is a microcosm of a business in America. It's family-owned. Most of them are. It's got tradespeople, educated people. It's got college-educated people, hardworking people, uh, people who associate with each other, and they're all interested in uh, helping each other and solving the customer's problem. And at the end of the day, they share in the profits, and I think everybody's happy in that. It is a very good thing. And to vilify that system is, uh, well, it's, it's un-American. Mm -hmm. um, one of the um, expressions that my father would have is when somebody says, you give so much back, mm -hmm. he would say, no, I don't give anything back. I never took anything. And, and, yeah, I know. I never took anything in the first place. <laughs> but it is the goodness of wealth creators. America has the greatest percentage of charitable contributions from people. Mostly they are rich people. Of course. But they give at a higher percentage than any other nation in the world. You could not get that capital formation if you didn't allow capital formation. They are good to their employees. They want their employees to prosper. Um, in our own town, uh, Carpentersville, which uh, although it is a very historic town, our buildings were uh, constructed in the 1870s through 1900, uh, which we've terrifically had an opportunity to restore to their beauty. Come to Carpentersville, you'll really see something very, very interesting, unique. But um, it was built Many of the homes, about 5,000 of them, were built in the uh, 50s for returning soldiers. They were maybe what I would call a Levitt town. The foreclosure crisis happened in Carpentersville, too, and maybe worse in Carpentersville than in some other areas. As a business guy, I saw that this was affecting the town that I had a significant investment in. Mm -hmm. If I can't attract people to come to Carpentersville to work, that affects my future. I went to the county, I went to the city, I went to the state, I went to all kinds of different agencies and said, we have a sh serious problem here. And essentially I received no help. Mm. And what the serious problem was, was vacant homes. And so we started buying them. 
and we now have branded what um, we call Homes by Auto, www.homesbyotto.com. We have purchased now about 125 homes, and we have completely renovated them, and our goal is to sell them at our cost. The first thing- So there's no profit in this? No, uh, <laughs> although the plumber makes money, the, the carpenter makes money, the realtor makes money, the taxes get paid, the building department gets their $1,200 building fee. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, but, um, so you're doing it as a zero-sum gain to your, your, your own, this, this Homes by Addo, but you are creating jobs along the way, creating more, um, better area for the community. What I told somebody what, is... What's happening here is an exhibition of courage because he's gone against all of these stinking regulations that are legion. The, the Boca Building Code <laughs> is a code for stopping you from doing anything. Well, I'd like it's to get to that. and but leadership because leadership is a, solves, solves problems. It's it capitalism. Solutions. Yep. I've got an investment that I want to protect. I'm going to invest over here to protect over here. That people would call diversification. What I would tell people is I can raise the market cap of Carpentersville by $200 million with nobody but Otto spending some money. And here's how that happens. If we fix a vacant house, what does the value of the house right next door go up by? A dollar? thousand dollars? It goes up by something. And the neighborhoods can start to flourish. When we took a slum uh, that was auto engineering when it became uh, dilapidated in Illinois Iron and Bolt, the prior owner abandoned the properties and built that into the beautiful riverfront campus, that takes away a stigma of Carpentersville. It raises the value of all of them. The first thing we do when I'm we buy... I'm going to stop you right there. It raised the value of the home, but it didn't raise the real estate tax. That's correct. No, because it, the business it, pays, it, no, helps to subsidize. No, because the, the, because the, the governments the, set the quantity of money. You must stop the spenders if you want to control your taxes. That's it's the key. not about assessments. It's if not assessments the value doubled of the tomorrow, your taxes wouldn't double tomorrow. But if the spenders doubled the take, your taxes would double tomorrow. Yeah. But in these homes, the first thing we do is we put a sign in the front yard that said, auto engineering is renovating this home to help retain the value of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And over the last few years that we have done this now, we have completely changed the, per um, uh, the perception of those neighborhoods. There are very good homeowners there that got stuck next to neighbors who abandoned their home. What are they going to do? Right. But if we can come in and fix that, problem, they now have hope to invest in themselves. And hope is not a strategy, mm -hmm. but hope does provide that opportunity for people to say, I'm willing to invest. And that is a strategy. So now we have these homes that um, uh, an organization in uh, Chicago, uh, Mercy Housing, headed by a very terrific smart lady, Cindy Holler, um, saw what we were doing and um, coordinated with Kane County to um, apply for uh, a neighborhood stabilization grant, and they asked Otto to do this grant. And we said we would. We already have a model of how to take a home and make it brand new, and they really are brand new. You don't have to exercise anything uh, down to the washer and dryer. Um, Let me and, stop you there. But uh, this, this renovating is complete. In most cases, it means new roofing, new siding, new windows, doors, rip out the interior, insulate the home, and put a new furnace in, appliances in the kitchen. It means making that home better than it was when it was new. It's a gutted, it, you gut it. Completely gutted, and we've actually branded it as an auto home because if someone else renovates, they can look the same, but you can't see what's under the drywall. But a branded auto home, you can. So Kane County came with a million and a half dollars that they had received from this grant, and they asked us to buy seven homes for them. And I said, you know, guys, I've already done, at the time we had done 50 or 60, I've already done 50 of these homes. I know how to do them. We have the capital to get through this. We don't need your million and a half dollars uh, to help us do more homes. We need your million and a half dollars to help buyers buy the homes. Oh. And what they said is, nope, that's not the government program. Uh -huh. The federal government mandates that we do this. Oh. So that's what we did. And the first thing I did is I turned in a budget. And they said, 
your budget is not detailed enough. Now, this budget is a budget that I've done 50 times for homes, uh -huh. and I have turned it into the village of Carpentersville, and so they approved it. I get building permits. They said that um, this, you can't say windows. You've got to say windows on the north side, windows on the south side, windows on the west side. I finally said, I didn't get into this bureaucracy. They hired Tom, spec writers. Spec Tom, I want to hear more about the spec writer and more about these homes.